There's no doubt in anyone's mind that the Kansas City Chiefs were a dominating football team this year. Posting one of the highest powered offenses in the league and a stout defense, their 14-3 record was of little surprise to anyone, even if they required referee assistance to get past my Bengals in the playoffs to move on to the Super Bowl. But this video isn't about that, because amongst the hype of the Andy Reid offense is a special teamer who quietly stunned the kicking community this year. The long-haired golden boy is no Trevor Lawrence impersonator, and he's no Dario Naharis from Season 3 of Game of Thrones, but instead a punter by the name of Tommy Townsend. And let's just say this year, Townsend was good. Really, really good. Good punt by Townsend. Dallas with the fair catch. Townsend boots another big at some game. That's so huge to be able to hit it that high. That's the number one of marveling at his first punt during the break. <laughs> this hang time. All the way back to the seven. Townsend, who was all pro punter this year. But before we can understand where he's at now and why it's such a surprise, first we have to get a grasp of where he came from. You see, Tommy's professional career is probably one of the most unpredictable ones because his college career to start off with didn't really give us that much to work with. Coming from the University of Florida, he only started for two seasons sitting behind a University of Florida legend who also happened to be his older brother, Johnny Townsend. Now, Johnny had given us a ton to work with with his professional career. I'm talking about a historical top five of all time, 46.2 yard career average across four years coming out with back to back 47 plus yard averages. These numbers are absolutely unable to be ignored by NFL coaches, leading the older Townsend brother to get drafted in the fifth round by the Oakland Raiders, handing the reins of his former college to Tommy, where Tommy would admittedly not see the same level of success. In 2018, he put up a 45.4 yard average, down from his brother's 47.5 the year prior, and he'd only net 39.77, which is over a yard less than what his brother had netted. 2019 would be a slight difference downturn for him, averaging just 44 yards a punt, but he would do this to bring up his net average, which was almost 42 yards at 41.86, which is a great improvement, but still in the shadow of his older brother's 42.1 yard net average during his 2015 campaign. Now, during his absence, his older brother had been having a bit of struggles as well because he was in and out of Oakland in one year as they decided to move on to now pro bowler and multi-time all pro punter AJ Cole. But aside from putting up good net punt stats, people just couldn't help but see his slightly worse numbers than his brothers and draw the unfair comparison, citing him to be a thinner, less powerful version of his older brother, even though aside from a last name, they shared little to nothing when it comes to their style. This led to the only punters getting picked up in the 2020 draft being former Ray Guy winner Braden Mann and All-American punter Sterling Hoffricher, which sent Townsend into free agency where he was picked up by the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I could add some suspense by saying he was going up against a 14-year vet, Super Bowl winning punter who has more than a proven commodity with his resume, but since we're talking about Townsend, most of you already know how that offseason battle goes, but just because he won the job doesn't mean this year was going to be all sunshine and rain for him. Actually, not even close. In fact, this year would be a little rough to say the least. Ranking 25th in gross average with a 45 yards a punt and 19th in net average, some would say it's not the worst place to be for a rookie, but in this year alone, he'd start getting a bad reputation for choking in big moments. At the start of the fourth in a tight game, he shanks a 33 yarder to give the ball back to the Raiders out their 30, where after a short drive, they'd be able to convert a field goal to put them up two scores. Early against the Chargers, being down late in the first, he'd miss again, setting off another 32 yarder, allowing them to maintain their lead. In the fourth quarter against the Bucks, he'd kick a 32-yarder and a 23-yarder back-to-back, setting them up in scoring position twice to almost single-handedly blow a 10-point lead, and then he'd fail a late pooch punt against the Falcons, opening up their playbook, allowing them to score and keep a game closer than it should have been. Now, don't get me wrong, Townsend had some really good games mixed in between there, but the punts aforementioned were enough to keep the Chief fans on their toes every time he stepped out onto the field, and his reputation did didn't really take a bad hit until the Super Bowl. This is where a group of fans started to unify against their punter, and when you go back and watch the tape, it's hard to blame them. Despite the fact that everything seemed to be falling apart that game, I think looking back, it was really obvious where a shining sore spot was, and that was the punting. 
Aside from opening up with a 51 yard touchback, Townsend would come back out and shank another one of those midfield punts that have been plaguing him in a close game with hitting a 27 yarder that would go out at the 30 yard line. But the more famous play, or I guess series of plays, would be when Tommy was backed up and in a twist of fate he would fumble the ball on the 3 yard line, then smack one of his better punts of the night. But it just gets called back for a flag. What would happen next would cause most people's stomachs to churn as from the same backed up position, he would hit a 29 yarder and not even get the ball past their own 40 yard line. With the score at this point being seven to three, naturally starting at the positive 38 for the Buccaneers meant they would go on to score and many disparaging fans will look back at this moment as the moment the Chiefs really lost control of the game. That offseason, Tommy would clearly work and work really hard, coming back, throwing an extra 4.4 yards during the regular season onto his gross average. But of course, this came with the asterisk of he punted less than anybody who played for an entire season, only having 35 punts, and he still had a few of those rough punts, like a 32 yarder, to keep the ball on the plus side of the 50 against the Chargers in a tight game. But his playoff performance was looking way better. Heck, he was dominating against the Bills in the second round, and in a close game to the Bengals, he did more than his part, flipping the field, keeping them backed up with a 52 yard average that game. But then we get to the 2022 season and it was quite possibly one of the best seasons of punting in the history of football. Now, in years past, as a bit of a precursor, we had seen some glimpses of brilliance like I've mentioned, particularly his first year, he just randomly broke a hang time record, hitting a 5.72 live operation hang time against the Raiders, and he would continue having little moments like these hitting some enormous hang. But there wouldn't be any year like this though. I mean, certain games were just purely unbelievable. Like against the Broncos, he averaged 5.4 seconds of hang on his punts while also averaging 66 yards a punt. He would also have a few other games that would leave fans' jaws completely unhinged from their faces, such as six punts for a 56-yard average against the Chargers, three punts for a 57-yard average against Buffalo, and another five punts for 52 yards against the Broncos in early January. In fact, this season alone, his hang time average would be the second highest in the league, averaging 4.6 seconds of hang a punt, which was only beaten by J.K. Scott's 4.7 average. The difference between these two punters is Townsend averaged nearly 7 more yards a punt than J.K., putting up a humongous 50.4 yard average, which was also only beaten by one person, star rookie punter Ryan Stonehouse. The other impressive part of this is that this time there are no asterisks to the distance, as this phenomenal feat came on 53 attempts, one more than his rookie year. And while his gross average and hang time would both have exactly one suitor in front of them, there was one place Tommy couldn't be denied, and that was his historic second best all-time net average. Not all time for the Chiefs, not all time for the season, but all time in the history of football. Only one man had netted more yards of punt than him, and that's the man known for having arguably the best season of punting in football history, Johnny Hecker. But Townsend locked up the best net average this year with 45.4 yards of punt, and after this performance came it all. First team all pro, a pro bowler, and the credibility of the best punter in the NFL for the 2022-23 to season. And then we got to his post season. The area fans still needed some final reassurance, and he was brilliant. A phenomenal showing at Jacksonville to keep them at bay all game, absolutely dominating performance against the Bengals, pinning them twice in this game to completely shut them out of coming back. And on two punts in the Super Bowl, he showed very well, completely quelling the noise about his performance issues in the postseason. So now you may wonder, I mean, how was he able to do this? Is it just pure power? Is he doing something different with his form? Is he roiding? And the answer I'd like to say is something we should have been able to see coming from a mile away. And ultimately, I think it comes down to the best, most innovative punting form we've ever seen. You see, Tommy's form 
isn't like everybody else's. The best way to describe it is he uses his body like a trebuchet. A traditional punter, let's take a look at another good punter, Blake Gillikin, will catch the ball and use his shoulders to get a nice gentle forward lean through his first steps and then his second steps he'll quietly pull those shoulders back, rotating his entire body around his hips to give his legs some extra whip to it. You see, most punters are actually going to try to not move their shoulders as much because to a degree, the more movement you have in your upper body, the harder it is to control your drop. So that adds a level of variability to it when you're just trying to move your shoulders to give your legs some more leverage. So now that I've told you this concept that any punting coach in America will probably teach you, throw it out and watch the Meister work. Look at how far down his shoulders go into his first step. Look at how slow he is to bring them up using every bit of upward momentum he gets from his shoulders raising into his swing through the ball. On top of that, he has completely perfected his drop to hold on to it to the perfect second to make purest contact with the ball exactly on the upswing, giving him peak distance and hang time every single time. There honestly aren't great words to put how far advanced Tommy is with his form, even compared to everybody else in the game. It, and it's his form alone which allows him to hit amazing feats such as a 6.0 hang time punt, arguably one of the rarest and hardest beats to pull off in sports history even if it didn't happen in the game and it all came by just Tommy sticking to his guns with his form which allowed him to do just this six out 